What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to do something slightly different we're going to talk about encryption about safely encrypting files on our system for this we're going to use a software called veracrypt and this is basically an open source on the fly encryption tool a fork of uh, truecrypt and the basic idea is that we can create containers volumes or virtual disks in the form of files um, that we can mount and dismount they are encrypted and we can store data there we can dismount them then and in order to mount them we need to enter a password we can also use some advanced features like hidden volumes and all that and for that uh, you can have multiple reasons two major reasons that I think of right away are first of all maybe you have some personal data some personal files some photos some videos anything that you don't want anyone to see to find on your system easily so what you can do is you can create these encrypted containers uh, to store these files and then you can also use hidden containers and all that hidden volumes uh, to make them even harder to find and you can then also put them safely on flash drives or um, hard drives so that people if they get the USB flash drive they can still not see what's in there because you have encrypted the uh, container besides that you maybe also are someone who does a lot of backups so maybe you back up your files a lot and you have important files that you want to back up and you don't want to have all these backups at home because at home, uh, if something happens to your home, the problem is that all your backups, even if you have 50 hard drives, they're still going to be gone if something happens to your one central place where you store them. So maybe you want to also have the backups in the cloud, but then again, you don't want to have them unencrypted in the cloud. So maybe you want to create a volume here, an encrypted volume, and then put that onto the cloud. This is also a use case for that. So what we're going to do in today's video, we're going to go through the different steps. We're going to create a volume. We're going to talk about the process. Uh, we're going to look at the encryption. And then we're going to also talk about some more advanced stuff like hidden volumes. So this is what we're going to do. Um, besides that, you can also encrypt existing partitions, existing disks. We're not going to talk about this. It's basically the same process. But instead of creating a new volume in, in the form of a file, you're taking something that already exists and you can encrypt uh, the existing partition or whatever with Veracrypt as well. So what we're going to do first, we're going to click here on create volume and this opens this wizard and we have here three different uh, options. We have create an encrypted file container, encrypt a non-system partition, encrypt a system partition or the entire system drive. We're not going to talk about those two. As I said, we're going to create an encrypted file container and uh, for that, we're basically just going to click next. We're going to use a standard Veracrypt volume for now. We're going to talk about the hidden in a second, uh, but we're going to create a basic Veracrypt volume and uh, then we can choose a location for that. The good thing is we can name this whatever we want. We can name it JPEG, we can name it uh, EXA, we can name it nothing, we can name it .vc if you want to know that it's a Veracrypt file. Whatever you want to name it, you can do that. I'm just going to call this my secrets, for example. Of course, you should not pick such an obvious name. And then we're going to go to next. We're going to pick an encryption algorithm. Actually, the advanced encryption standard is quite good. You can also pick something else if you have a reason for that. Uh, then you can also choose a hash algorithm. SHA-512 uh, SHA is actually quite good. So you can choose something else if you want as well. Um, and then we go to next, we can choose the size. This is important because this works actually, this file is actually going to work like a USB flash drive. So you can mount it, but then it only has like 50 megabytes, for example, or two gigabytes, whatever you give it. So I'm going to now pick 50 megabytes. Uh, we're going to click on next and now we can choose a password. So for example, for this video, I'm just going to pick one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Of course, please pick a password with like 20 characters or something. A lot of uh, different symbols and no words that are somehow related to your person. Uh, I'm going to just pick a basic password here for demonstration purposes. We're going to go to next. As you can see, Veracrypt warns me that this password is quite short. It's easy to crack, so we should not use it. But again, we're going to do it for the sake of this video. And what you see here is very interesting. We can now move our mouse around in random patterns. They should be as random as possible. Um, and this basically collects randomness from the mouse movements. Um, we can do it. The longer you do it, the, the better, basically. But this basically just collects randomness. And this randomness is important for the encryption process. You can choose a file system here. You can choose uh, some advanced features here. 
And basically when you're done with your mouse movement, you can just click on format. Uh, Windows fast startup is enabled, you want to disable it. Now, if for some reason this causes some problems, you can disable it, I don't disable it and it still works. Uh, then the volume is being created. There you go. And as you can see, it's now created, we can exit. And now we have this file, this file, you can call it whatever you want, you can hide it, you can put it in 10 different directories, whatever you want to do with it. Don't call it my secrets and put it on a desktop, obviously. But if you now have this file, what you want to do is you want to mount it so you can pick a uh, drive letter that's free, we can go with with F, for example, and we can select a file here and go to desktop to my secrets. And then we click on mount and this basically then uh, allows us to mount the volume. Now, if this is a TrueCrypt volume, if you are someone who used TrueCrypt in the past, you want to check this, otherwise just ignore this. And then in order to open this we want to type one, two, three, four, five, the password, and then just okay, this is going to take some while. And uh, of course, if you enter the wrong password, it's not going to work. And if you enter the right one and wait a little bit, it will be mounted to the F drive in this case. And there you go. So I can just double click here. And you can see the folder is empty. If I go to my computer, this computer, you can see that I now have this local disk F here, which works like a flash drive, basically. And if I click on it, it's this uh, thing. So I can now go ahead and create a text file, for example, my file.txt, I can open it and say my password is so awesome. Whatever, save it, close it dismount it. And then we have this file here, which still we only can enter with a password. And the next time I mount it, I'm going to do it one more time, one, two, three, four, five, this is going to mount again, this uh, container to our system, and I can then enter it and use the files. It's basically like a flash drive in the form of a file. And I can then upload this file to the Google Drive, for example, and in order to see what's in that file, you would have to install VeraCrypt enter the right password, mount it. And there you go then you have your files in that system. Now, the problem with this approach is that maybe even though it's unlikely, you will get into the situation where you are forced to reveal the password. So maybe someone comes to you and says, I know this is the VeraCrypt volume, and I know you have the password. I know there are some files in there. And if you don't give the password to me, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Unlikely scenario, but the only way to get out of it is to basically give away a password that mounts the volume, but still doesn't reveal your hidden files. And the way to do this is to basically use a hidden volume. The idea is quite simple, a basic standard VeraCrypt volume looks like that you have the header, you have the space that is occupied by the files inside of the volume, and then you have some free space. The idea of a hidden volume is the following you have the header of the basic volume, a second header for a hidden volume, then you have um, the space occupied by the files. And then you have the data area of the hidden volume, which is part of the free space. Now, VeraCrypt claims that this is undetectable. So if you create a hidden volume, there is no way unless you know it to to um, to find this hidden volume. So if you just look into the VeraCrypt volume with the ordinary password, there is no way to realize that this volume actually has uh, a hidden volume inside of it. And we're going to talk about this more. Let's just go ahead and create this. We're going to create a volume now, still in encrypted file container. And now we're going to create a hidden VeraCrypt volume. So as it says, it may happen that you're forced by somebody to reveal the password, and so on. So just click on next. And um, here we have like two modes that we can choose from the normal mode and the direct mode, the normal mode says, if you select this option, the wizard will first help you to create a normal VeraCrypt volume, and then a hidden VeraCrypt volume within it. And the direct mode is basically you already have an existing VeraCrypt volume, and you want to create a hidden volume inside of it, we're going to go with the first uh, option here. So we're going to go to next. First of all, we create the normal volume. So we go to the desktop, and say again, my secret container or something. Then next, we're going to go through the same process. This is the outer volume. So we proceed, we say, okay, want to have like 50 megabytes, want to choose one, two, three, four, five as a password, one, two, three, four, five as a password. Next, there you go. Now again, random, random mouse movements. 
uh, until the bar is full. Format, no, and then we have our outer basic volume. Nothing, nothing different than the first process that we went through. Um, and once this is done, we can continue here with next. And now it wants some administrator permission. And now we create the hidden volume. Now the hidden volume is inside of this secret container. So we're going to click on next. We're going to follow the processes here again. Now the important thing is that the hidden volume can only be a part of the outer volume. So we cannot make it more than 50 megabytes. Let's say we want to make it 10 megabytes for now. Uh, it's going to be inside of the outer volume. We're going to pick a different password. Now it's so important that you pick a different password because how this is going to work in the end is that you're going to try to mount your container and depending on the password that you enter, you're going to get a different, um, you're going to get a different uh, container. So if you type one, two, three, four, five, you're going to get into the outer container. If you type this password here, you're going to get into the hidden volume. So we're going to choose for this the password secret, secret. There you go. Again, we do the same thing, random mouse movements, blah, blah, blah. Until the bar is full and then format. And that should basically be it. There you go. Now, the important thing that you need to realize here is that it is important how you mount that container. First of all, if you just go ahead and mount it, you will see that this works. So we can just mount this and we have some uh, some options here. But basically, I can just go ahead and type one, two, three, four, five. And here I can just mount this and this will mount the ordinary outer container. If you do just that, there's no way to tell that there is a hidden volume inside. Even if you have some files, nothing is going to change here. Uh, nothing is going to be detectable here, at least according to VeraCrypt. You will not be able to see that there is a hidden volume inside. So I can just use this as an ordinary container. I can I can do certain things here. I'm not going to do anything here yet. So I'm going to dismount this. Now, what's important is that if I mount this now with a different password, if I mount this with secret, I'm going to get into a different container. So I'm going to get into the hidden volume just by entering a different password. I didn't, um, or actually did I, do I have to do something? Do I have to check that I'm actually entering a hidden volume? I'm not sure, but I think actually not if I remember correctly. So I think just entering the password is enough to trigger the hidden volume because what it's first going to do is it's going to try to apply the password to the first header, then it's going to see no, it doesn't work. So let me apply to the second header. And then it's going to see, okay, this works. So let me enter the hidden volume. There you go. I didn't have to check anything. And you can see now this is just 10 megabytes. So I can go ahead here and create a file. My secret.txt. And here I'm going to type this is my secret. Save it, close it dismount it. And now what I can do is I can mount the container again with one, two, three, four, five. And if someone forces me to reveal the password, I'm just going to say it's one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to say that I don't have anything else except for this password. They're going to try it. They're going to see that the container is mounted once this is done. And they're going to just believe that this was the correct password. Unless, of course, they know that I have a hidden volume in there. But as you can see now, I open this and there is no file in here. I cannot see any text file, anything. I can only find a hidden volume if I actually enter secret as a password here. Now, what's important is that, of course, I want to have something in that container. Otherwise, it's not going to be believable. And for that, I can create some files here. But the important thing is, since the volume right now, this volume right now and VeraCrypt right now are not aware that there even exists a hidden volume. Now, I know that there is one, but VeraCrypt doesn't know that. It thinks that this is an ordinary container. As I said, it's undetectable. So we don't know there is a hidden volume. If I want to say that there is a hidden volume to VeraCrypt, if I want to signal that, I need to mention that in the mount options. Why do I want to do that? Because right now, the 10 megabytes that are re reserved for the hidden volume are treated as random data. And if I fill this volume here up with something, it's just going to overwrite them. It's just going to say, okay, I don't care about this. Let me just uh, write over that space because who knows? Uh, it, it's just random data. It's not really something important. If I want to signal 
that I want to mount the outer volume, but I want to respect the space of the inner volume or of the hidden volume, what I can do is I can just um, mount this and I can go to the mount options here. And I can click protect hidden volume against damage caused by writing to outer volume. And here I have to enter the password to the hidden volume as well. So I enter secret here. And I click OK, I enter 12345 here. And then it mounts the secret container, it mounts the hidden volume or it actually doesn't mount a hidden volume, but it actually allows me to edit stuff in the outer container without the danger of overriding anything inside of it of the hidden container. So I can basically put some files in there some sample files, you could say a honeypot, uh, some fake security data, some fake data. And then in the hidden volume, I can have the real data that I want to hide. And by changing something in that way, I'm not doing anything that is harming the hidden, uh, the hidden volume. So there you go. I can still not see anything here. But now I can create some files. This file, maybe an Excel file, whatever publisher document, and then I can close this again. And I can use this as before. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button, leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.